The Parent Show. Want to feed them books to read them, get a clue on what to do, and your will guide you through The Parent Show. Lots of hearts on the run, all together everyone. Ask the questions, spark a fire, meet the people who inspire. Oh, oh, The Parent Show, when you need to know. The Parent Show. I'm here with Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson, and we're going to talk about how to get your kids excited about science. How can we as parents cultivate little scientists at home? I have a 14 year old daughter. She's 14 going on 19. <laughs> right. I have a 10 year old son. I think he's 10 going on 6 sometimes. <laughs> but anyhow, but my lesson is to get out of the way. <laughs> I think parents get in the way of kids' curiosity. They'll go up to a flower, maybe pluck the petals off. And you say, don't pluck the petal, I just paid for that. No, no, you just stop them from investigating what's in the middle of the flower. How much did the flower cost? A couple of dollars? Fine. This is. The president of Harvard once said, if you think the cost of education is high, try the cost of ignorance. It's even higher. So what I try to do is expose my kids to all manner of the way nature works. Yes, biology. Yes, chemistry. Yes, physics. In the classroom, mm -hmm. it's playing with blocks. It's playing with the flowers, uh, usually destroying them in the process, but in the act of learning. We do a lot of the sink float experiments all the time. With Love water, right? sink float. Like sink float. Love sink float. <laughs> well, here's another one you do. You take oil, float it on water, and then find something that sinks in oil but floats on water. Mm. And then there it is at the boundary between the mm. two liquid layers. That's kind of cool. And this is all stuff that we have at home. So it's it's nothing that you need. To you know, yeah, you don't have to go make some special purchase, exactly. and you just let them do it. Exactly. And occasionally things will break. Occasionally things will get dirty. And so it's more of a burden of the parent. But in the big picture, if you ranked burdens that you encounter as an adult, that would be pretty low yeah. Oh, yeah. on the list. You know, I love when you talk about the philosophy of teaching kids how to think, not what to think. Right. Learn to love the questions themselves. The world isn't only about an answer. Sometimes there is no answer. We haven't gotten there yet. Sometimes the answer isn't just A or B. It's some A blended with B plus C thinking about D. We live in a kind of a multiple choice society where there's that one answer not the gradation of answers that characterizes the actual world in which we live. And so I think if you can foster at home, reflecting on what things are and how they work, mm -hmm. not so much collecting data. And all of that type of thinking would have kids be anything that they want to be. Exactly. And can I, another, can I tell you? Yes. I didn't get the, you yes, got enough tape or whatever, or disc, or whatever you're putting it on. <laughs> you know, you've, you've heard people in their job, they say, oh, the, 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 the boss says, oh, we need you to do this. And someone will say, I'm not trained for that, Ugh. so learn it. <laughs> but, like, so what? <laughs> See it as a challenge. Say, wow, here's something new. Let me figure that out. Yeah, like a kid. Like a kid. Yeah. <laughs> because what is a scientist? It's someone who never stopped being a kid. Really, that's, that's what it is. <laughs>